Senator Heinrich, you're probably going to carry on this conversation, so it's your turn. I, I will do my best, and thank you for having this hearing. Um, and I, I continue to hear from uh, utilities, I mean, that that it's a real challenge, the, the backlog, and that it's a, it's a huge bottleneck. Um, and in fact, we heard from uh, a former member last year, if you remember, who uh, used to be on the House Intelligence Committee that, that he couldn't get his clearing. And it, if, if he can't get his clearance, then who can? Um, is, uh, let, me, let me switch gears here. And, and Mr. Rob, you mentioned spear phishing, and I agree that's an incredi incredibly important point of entry that we need to do a better job on, and it's a hard one because it's human-based. Uh, Secretary Evans mentioned separating IT systems and OT systems. Uh, when I think about this, and I grew up in a utility family, my dad was a lineman, then he went on to manage both gas and electric distribution systems. Uh, and there is a bias in utilities, uh, and it's, it's oftentimes a very positive bias towards reliability, but sometimes that can manifest itself in ways that don't help us update systems. And specifically, I think about SCADA systems, and I think about programmable logic controllers. Uh, I think about the openings there with regard to being able to control those systems using, uh, using radio communication, uh, the fact that they're hard to air gap, especially the, the, the older ones. Um, and I worry that we're not moving fast enough, especially in, in a in a world where it's often viewed, if it works, just leave it alone. And sometimes that causes utilities or the, the person whose job is actually to update the software or change out an outdated component to not do that. And so those, those uh, challenges continue to exist well beyond their normal lifespan. So are we doing enough in terms of um, uh, in, in terms of securing and updating those kinds of components across the entirety of the utility system, Mr. Rob. Yeah, so the, uh, a, a couple comments to, to your point directly. The, the SIP standards do require critical systems to be patched um, and to be kept at, up to date with the, uh, with the latest releases. Uh, you're right that it is a uh, challenge in many cases to uh, uh, reconfigure systems without studying all the derivative ramifications of those. It's a very complex machine. But uh, the, the standards do require uh, ongoing patching and, and modernization. Do we, do we spot check or have any way all, to just make sure that's actually happening sub subject in the to, field? Subject to spot check and thorough audit uh, routinely. One other point I wanted, if I could just sure. a second, to um, the senator uh, question from Arizona, because it's applicable here. The CRISP program insights are not confined to just the CRISP participants. Uh, when we work through the insights that come out of that program, although they're originated from a handful of utilities, they're disseminated broadly across the, the rural electric, so the rural electric for example. companies, the municipalities, and so forth are the beneficiaries of that information. I'm sorry. Chair, no, uh, Chairman Chatterjee, um, I, I wanted to ask you, is, is TSA the right place? And, and I appreciate that they're, you know, putting more focus on this, and they seem to have a pretty big job at the airports, I've noticed. Um, so, like, is it the right place for that to live? So, when I recently raised this issue, that was the question that I asked. Is the entity responsible for aviation, for railroads, for highways, you know, also responsible for this? Particularly when, you know, reports indicated that they had as few as, I think, four or six people uh, responsible for overseeing this uh, this really critical task. Um, I've been impressed with how they've responded to the call for action, but the GAO report clearly showed that there was much more work to do, and I think particularly stressed um, uh, having the expertise and the resources in place. Uh, I think FERC is making a commitment through our Office of Energy Infrastructure Security to work with TSA um, to provide that expertise. Sure. My final point I want to make, because it addresses a point Senator King was pressing me on as well, and, and I just wanted to be clear on this. Um, the authority to impose mandatory standards does currently lie with TSA, and it would take Congress to, uh, to, to, to make that change. And so I, I think, just want to be clear. I wasn't I we ducking the question. But I'll, I'll be thinking about that, that question. Where is the right place to do this in, in uh, making sure it's, it's uh, adequately resourced? Uh, before I let you go, uh, Chairman, I want to just get your update on um, FERC Order 841. What kind of a timeline are we looking at? 
So um, we've heard from a number of stakeholders that uh, they're they're waiting for our action on um, rehearing. Uh, we had a comment uh, uh, or, or a deadline of uh, for filings of uh, December the third. Um, these are very very complex issues. We understand that people want that clarity going forward. Um, my colleagues and I are committed to doing it right, um, and uh, we, we understand the the agenda and the desire to get it done. Better to do it right than rush. I, I, but we're I agree. We do need to get this right, but it is also a, a pretty urgent matter. Um, it, it certainly opens up an enormous amount of economic activity and a resiliency that we need to be, uh, you know, supportive of. So I, I would just once again emphasize uh, what an urgently important order that is. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman.